Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add custom text to the slides in your slideshow. So I talked about in the last video how to add an identity plate, how to watermark your photos, and how to add or take off rating stars. So let's now get into the custom text functionality. Now I actually have some custom text down at the bottom here. Because I started my design with a template that added this custom text field, it's still here. And though you can't read it, it's the file name. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this to make it active. And then I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard to take it off. So if you're starting with a template that's got text that you don't want, it's that simple. Select it and delete it. Now what I want to start out with is adding titles to my slides. So this text is going to be different for each photograph. Because of that, the first step is to add that information into the metadata for my photographs. So that's not done here in the slideshow module. It's done in the library module. With the photos selected that I want to start working on, I'm going to go to the library module and I'm going to come over to the metadata panel. So it's the second to last panel on the right side in the library module. And I'm going to go to the default view and you'll see title and caption fields. So you can also add captions to your slideshows. But for this particular photo, you can see that I've already typed in the title Methow Valley, Washington. If I click on this next one, you'll see Bandon, Oregon, Seaside, Oregon, Death Valley. I believe I've done that for all of these slides. But for the sake of the demonstration, though, I'm going to go to this first slide and I'm going to take the title off just so that you'll be able to see what will happen if you haven't typed in the title before trying to use it in the slideshow module. Now you can also add captions here in the metadata panel and display those on your slides in your slideshow. A caption can be much longer than a title. Let's take a look at using titles first though. Let's go ahead and go to the slideshow module here. And just because I have a title in the metadata does not mean that it's going to display here in the slideshow module until I explicitly tell Lightroom to use that information. I'm going to select the photo that I know I've got a title on though. And I'm going to click on this ABC button here in the toolbar. If you don't see your toolbar, type T for toolbar. So I'll click on ABC, and by default, Lightroom assumes I want to type in some custom text. I, in fact, don't want to do that. If I type in custom text and I put that on my slides, that same text is going to appear on every single slide. That actually would be another way to get Laura Shoe Photography on all of my slides. What I want in this example, though, is to click where it says custom text and to instead choose title. Now I've chosen title and yet I can't see a title in this box. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down on the right hand side here to the overlays panel down to text overlays and because this box is active it's showing me all of these settings for this particular box. So I can see that my text color is set to white. So I don't want it to be white. I can't see it. So I'm going to click in this box here and I'm going to choose a different color. So I can click in the vertical bar to get to get to my colors and you can see that of course now I can actually see the text. Now here's a little tip for you. What if you actually want the same color that you used somewhere else here in the slideshow module or even a color from one of your photographs? How can you get that? Let's first say that I want a color from one of my photographs. I'm going to click anywhere in this big box with the eyedropper, hold my mouse button down, and drag out. Now Lightroom is just sampling wherever my mouse is. So if you look at this text field right here, as I drag around in my photos, you'll see that it's changing based on the color that I'm sampling out here in my photographs. Now in this case, I said I wanted the color of this text. So this text is the override color I used for the identity plate. So I want this color right here. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag out to that color. Lightroom will sample that, and I'll have the exact same color as I do up here. 
whether it looks good or not. Okay, now that I've got the color set, I can also change the font. So I can click on the drop down and choose any font. I would consider choosing the same font as up here, except it would take me so long to scroll down to papyrus that you would become very bored. So we'll go ahead and use this font here. To change the size, I don't have a scale slider right here. So what I do instead is click and drag on a corner to make it smaller. So I'll make it fairly small. And then I'll click and drag from inside the box to place it below the photo. And just like in the last video when I talked about the anchor on the identity plate, I have the same anchor following me around as I drag custom text. So I want to anchor this to the bottom of the photo so that regardless of how tall the photo is, the text is right below the photo. I'll go ahead and click away from this box. I'll click out here and I'll look at another photo that's got a very different shape and you can see that the text is always just a little bit above the photo regardless of how tall the photo is. Notice also that if I click on the text that I can reduce the opacity. So again, if I was putting text on the photo for some reason, maybe that would be appropriate. Or I just want to tone down how heavy that text is. Let's go ahead and add another field. Let's add exposure. The first thing I'm going to do is click away from this box. I don't want this box selected, so I'll click in the gray here. Then I'm going to click on ABC again to add a new field. And again, I don't want it to be a custom text field that I type in. I want it to be a field from the photo metadata. So I'm going to click on the drop down here and I'm going to choose exposure. It's white, so I'll come over to text overlays, click on the white square, and I want this color out here. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag out to this color that I've already got for the title. Then I can close the box by clicking on the X. Now let me just say that if you can't make a precise selection of the text out here and you want that color, you can find out what that color is. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let me activate this one and go into this square. Right here I have this hex box. This may be more than some of you want to know. But if you click on that hex box, it tells you the six digit letter or number of that color. So you can highlight that, do a controller command C to copy it, or you could write it down, of course. Then you could come over to this other field, activate it, click on this color square again, and actually type in or paste that number in that hex field there. And I can see that I already have that exact same number, so I did sample that properly. But that's a tip for those of you that want to make sure you have precision. Now I'm going to take this exposure information and make it smaller. And then I'm going to click and drag it to be anchored to the bottom of the photograph and below the title. It's a little bit tricky to get it into the exact same spot. Now I'm having trouble getting it there. So I am in fact going to take the square and drag it up to the bottom of the photograph. Just no other way for me to get it anchored to the right spot. Things are too tight in here. Okay, now I'm going to click away from this and I can see that it looks pretty lousy. It's just too tight down there. So what I'm going to decide to do instead is take this exposure information and put it along the side of the photo. So I'm going to click on the text field again and I'm going to hit the rotate button. Now I'm going to click and drag this to be anchored to the bottom right corner of the photograph. Because I clicked and dragged on that square to anchor it to the bottom of the photograph, it's no longer snapping. But that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this where I want it. And then I'm going to take that square and I'm going to drag it out to the corner here. Now I know this is going to work well on a photograph that's this narrow. But I can see that if I have a photograph that comes all the way out to the edge, this may get too tight. So let's take a look at my widest photograph. Yeah, it just gets too tight there as well. So at this point, what I would do is come up to the layout section, make sure that I don't have any white squares in here so that these are not linked as I slide this. And I would 
link the left and right sliders so that as I slide one, they both go. And I would bring this in a little bit. Next, I'd come back down to the overlay section and continue to work on this. So when this is displayed large, I don't really need it that big. Maybe I'll make it a little tighter to the photo, etc. So I'm sure you can come up with more attractive looking slideshows than this, but I want to give you as many ideas as I can here. Let's go back to a vertical photo, check that out. We'll just call that good. But there's a lot of functionality in here. I want to show you a couple more things on creating custom text. The first of them is putting multiple fields together, multiple metadata fields together. Now, for this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and click on this and I'm going to delete it. And I am going to bring the bottom margin up. I just want to put more text underneath the title there. I'll go back up here, unlink all of these, and bring the bottom margin up just a little bit more. Now, let's say that I want to put the camera, the exposure, and the ISO all together on one line. I could do them as separate fields, just as I've shown you how to do title and exposure. But now I want to do a custom field that brings together other fields. Now, for some of you, this may be going beyond what you want or need, but I'll go ahead and show you so that you know that the functionality is here. I'm going to click on ABC again, and I'm going to click on the drop down here, and there is no field in the drop down that combines camera exposure and ISO. So I'm going to go all the way down to the last choice, edit. And in this text template editor, I'm going to specify this combination of metadata fields. In this white box, I'm going to wipe out what's here. And I'm going to go ahead and type camera colon so that that will appear. And then the camera name is going to come after this. In the EXIF data section here, I'm going to choose model. I could choose make and model, but I know from experience that in the model field, my camera records the name as well. So I'm going to click insert and you'll see a sample here that's based on the one photo that I have selected out here. So it's automatically telling me that I'm successful here. I've got camera, colon, Canon EOS 20D. Now I'm going to put a semicolon in here and then I'm going to put exposure. And now I want to insert the metadata field for exposure. So again, down here in the camera information section, I'm going to choose exposure. But notice all the other things you can choose as well. Focal length, flash, lens, GPS, ratings, labels, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and choose exposure. And now I can see that what that's going to display as. I'll put another semicolon, type in ISO, colon. And now I'll come back down to this section and I'll choose ISO. And I see that I've got all the information. The only thing I don't like is that I've got ISO colon ISO. So that's more information that I need. So I'll take out the ISO colon in here and I'm good to go. So that's how you would combine multiple fields. I would come in here and explore the information that you can, you can include. So file names, virtual copy names, uh, capture dates, Again, the camera information, IPTC information, so titles, captions, copyright and contact information, location fields, etc. Now that I've got this set up, I need to make a decision on whether to save this rule. If I'm just going to use it in this one slideshow design, I don't really need to save it as a rule. But it did take a few minutes to set up, so if there's a chance I want to use it again later in other contexts, then I'll click on this drop down here and I'll say save current settings as new preset. So this would be my camera, exposure, and ISO text. I'll click create. And then down here I'll click done. And now the information is displayed down here. Again, it's displayed in white. So I'll come to text overlays, click on the white drop down, and click, hold, and drag out to this title field to get that color. Close the text box and then resize this. Click and drag to move it. Have to do a lot of resizing here. It is a lot of information to display, obviously. 
and I would continue to resize it. Again, remember that we're seeing things in a small preview window, we're not seeing it full screen. So what may look too small here may be just fine when it's displayed at the size that I'm going to, to end up with it as. And let's see, I'm going to take this and I'm going to anchor it to the bottom of the photograph. Now if I can't get it to anchor to the bottom of the photograph, then again, I'll just position the text as I want it, take that square, move it up to the top. So that's how to string together multiple fields of information. Feel free to add many text fields to your slides. Now let's actually go to this first photograph here because it has some issues that haven't been evident yet. So when I click on it, notice what I get here. The title field is empty. If you remember, back in the library module, I took the title off of this one. So I wanted you to see what would happen if you use a metadata field like title or captions that's actually empty. While you're designing your slideshow, Lightroom is just warning you that there is no title for this photograph. However, when you preview or play this slideshow, it's not going to show empty. It's just going to be blank here, so there is no title. So that's not really so much of a problem. Let me go ahead and stop this here, go back to the first slide. But it's a warning to you that it's going to be blank. Now we set up a custom field here with camera exposure and then ISO. But this photograph is in fact a scan. So it's still showing the text that we hard coded into that rule. But where the camera model should go, the exposure should go, and then the ISO should go, that is actually blank. When I preview this, I'm going to preview it and I'm going to pause it right away just so that you just see this first slide. Because we hard coded in these words, camera colon, exposure colon, they're actually showing up here on the slide. That may be fine just to say this photograph has no camera, it has no exposure, or you might actually want to change that rule to not have these words in it if you have a mix, for example, of scans and digital photos. So what I could do is cancel out of the slideshow click on this field, come down to the drop down here, and go all the way down to edit. And I could edit this field. So I could come in here, for example, I could take out camera colon, so I just have the model, and I could take out exposure colon. I would want to take out the semicolons as well, or they will appear, but I'll leave some spaces in here. So now I just have Model Exposure ISO Rating. I'm not seeing the example here because the photograph that I have selected out here doesn't have that information, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and click on this preset here again, and I'm going to update it with this new rule here. Now I can click Done, and now I'll click away from there, and you see that for this particular photograph I see nothing. But when I come to a digital photograph, I see camera, exposure, and ISO. So ups and downs to hard coding text into those fields. All right, now this is going to play quickly because I have the slide durations very fast, but let's see what these look like across several different slides. So this one has no exposure, it's a scan, and I'm back to digital photos now, and it's all looking good and I'm good to go. This up here is a little tight, so I can adjust that. I'll hit the stop button on the slideshow, and I'll click on the identity plate to make it active, scroll up to the identity plate section here, maybe make it just a little bit smaller, and I'm good to go. So this concludes the lesson on how to add text to your photo slides in a slideshow. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how to add beginning and ending title slides to your slideshows.